Hi everyone. I'm doing this video on my classic debut model and that can only mean one thing. It's time for another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you one way to make textures using a program called Krita. Krita isn't perfect, but it's free and I'll include the link below in the video description. For those of you who already have a background in digital art, you may find this tutorial a bit rudimentary. But textures give us a way to add a lot of shading and variety to our background and characters. So let's get started. So let me show you one of the things that I've already done with textures, and this is the, the fighter model. And the fighter model has three textures that I've, uh, starting with this helmet here. Let me go to this helmet top layer. There we are. And you can see this is a really simple texture. It is just two white lines and it's used to create the gleam on his armor. So let me switch to the control tool here. And you can see if I move this around, I can decide where that gleam goes. Let's take a look at one of his arms here. And one of the fun things about textures is, while you may not originally intend well, one use for them, you, you may find another use for them after a while. For example, this texture along the leather of his arm was originally intended to be like the edge of a, a castle cylinder-shaped tower, but it didn't work very well for that. But I discovered it worked great for leather. So I used that on his arm, I used it on his belt. And last, up here at the top, you've got this texture here, which is for his chainmail. And now that you've zoomed in a bit, you can see this is really just a series of dots and a little white streak for the, the shiny part of it. And this is something that I picked up from um, uh, one of Hal Foster's books on uh, Prince Valiant. And this is kind of how he chose to do chainmail style textures. So I kind of adopted that and stuck with it. And I think it looks pretty good. Here's a curved version of it for his coif. So, these are three examples of textures that you can use in characters. But let's jump into Krita and actually do some stuff. All right, so here's Krita. You may have to move things around a bit to, to get it to look the way I do, or just don't use the way I do it at all, if you've got a wet method you prefer. I usually like a palette up here, color mixer here, which I don't use as much, and then layers, brushes, and then layers and brushes down here to kind of keep things simple. So. Let's create a texture. We'll go to File, New. Uh, for the height and the width, I recommend a multiple of 60 pixels. So I'm going to use 480. And 300 PPI is just fine. And let's hit Create. And this is not going to be a big texture. Mouse wheel to scroll in and out. First thing you want to do is go up here. Go up to View and choose Show Grid. And this is the grid. And the reason you want it to show grid is because um, the reason you want your resolution to be a multiple of 60s is because that makes each of these brackets here 10 pixels. And also, it gives you a way to divide this texture up. Um, so if you want to divide it into thirds, into quarters, into fifths, into sixths, you can do that because these guidelines give you uh, the correct way to maintain your proportions. Next thing you want to do is go back up to view and choose wrap around mode. Here we go. So the whole screen turns white, and you're about to find out why. Watch this. I'm going to scroll a little bit, and let me just throw some paint on here. This is the feature, these two features together kind of really help make your create a picture into an actual texture. And if you go to the edge here, the work you do on one side of the edge appears on the other side. So in this way, it ensures that you know that your texture wraps around. So I'm going to do my first texture here with no transparency at all. So let's start. We're just going to do throw some paint on here. We'll take a brown color, and I'm going to use the fill tool, which of course looks like a paint bucket. And I'm going to throw that in layer one. Blurp, the whole thing turns brown. Now I'm going to add some texture to that brown. Let's choose a brush that's good for adding a bit of texture. Um, we'll use chalk, maybe. Yeah, a little too rough. Here we go. I'm just going to put a couple of spots on there. Let's make sure we put one in a corner where it overlaps. All right. So this would be like a good spotted texture if you were doing some horse fur or something like that. 
So let's save this. So we'll save this as an actual Krita file. We'll call this horse fur. But then we also have to export it in an actual image file. So let's, I usually use PNG. PNG supports transparency. Let's see, store alpha channel. That's important, make sure you have that checked. Choose okay. Now, let's go back to Krita. Just make a shape here. <laughs> it's still using my, uh, my old texture. Let me get rid of that right quick. Okay. All right, so we're back in Krita here. Uh, the color we choose for this figure isn't going to matter because we're going to apply a texture to it, and the texture doesn't have any transparency. So let's turn the stroke on just for fun. And go to Effect, and we choose Image Texture. Select Texture. And here's Horse Fur. And we have it set to Tile. We want that so I can demonstrate something. And we hit OK. And we can kind of scroll this around, position it how we want. We can turn it diagonally. And by sliding the slider in and out, we can make the texture more dense or less dense. And there you go. That's the basics of applying a texture in Krita. All right, so next let's try something with some transparency to it. Let me see. I'm going to do a textile style texture that I'm going to use to add an accent to my uh, my figure's shirt. So here we have uh, 480 by 480 once again. Let's add an extra step at the beginning. Let's go to our layers and let's turn off this first layer. And this checkerboard pattern indicates that layer 2 now has transparency. So we go to view. Let's turn on the grid and turn on wrap around mode. There we go. Grid's a little harder to see with the checker background, but the checker background tells us that, hey, this is um, transparent. So let's just choose black and let's create like a real simple, uh, simple shirt pattern style texture like you'd see on a, like say an 80s shirt. Let's shrink our pen size a bit. That's done up here. You can use the mouse wheel for that or just pick a number. There we go, that's better. And I want these to look really well aligned, so I'm gonna use the line tool. So, let's make a nice diagonal here. There we go. And a second one, let's, let's not make them equal. There we go. All right, pick another one somewhere. This one will go like this, and then pop back up this way. And we'll do one more. This one like this, and then a short one that goes this way. That's kind of one, it's, it's kind of like a 80s style sweater. All right, we'll save this in Kreta's format. We'll call this a sweater pattern. And now we also export it as a PNG file. Make sure we have alpha on and hit OK. Let's switch back to Krita and let's open my standard desk set. If you have a set that you use over and over again, always make sure you've got it uh, made how you want. So let's give my persona here a, a interesting shirt pattern. This is the tool we want. Select shape, blorp, turns checkered. Now instead of plain, we choose image texture, select texture, go to the appropriate directory, which is here in tutorials. Choose the sweater pattern, and we do want to have that on tile. And that's a bit big, so let's shrink that down. Let's do the belly as well. Set that for texture, image texture. Oh, the 
those sizes don't quite match. There we are. And let's do the upper arms. Oh, upper arm left. There we go. Upper arm right, select the part we want to use, image texture. There we are. Now I look like a weirdo wearing a uh, 80s or early 90s style sweater. <laughs> we'll do a quick render of that so you can see. And there it is. Not, not, not the most attractive pattern, certainly, but you get the idea of what you can do. So I'm going to close that without saving it because I don't want that texture to be there the next time I have to use my desk set. Okay, let's close out of this. Start a new one, 480 by 480. Now let's do more of a uh, illustration style texture. Go over here, turn the grid on and turn on wraparound mode. And grid and wraparound are gonna take on a, a more important tone for this because um, I'm gonna be drawing some lines. So let me pick a brush, like a really simple blob brush here. And let's use like a pencil. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks more like an actual, actual pencil. So it's set for 12 point. Now I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to create some uh, illustration style hash marks. And the grid becomes important in this because this is going to help me figure out um, where a given mark should begin and where it should end. Now, while I do own a, a, a drawing tablet, I'm not gonna use it for this. I'm just gonna use the mouse. And a bit of imperfection in your, uh, in this style, type of texture for, um, illustration style drawing is just fine because you know it kind of shows that a person's hand was actually at work and it wasn't just a computer drawing line so let's do our best to do this and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go two across and four up so there we go that's a start so two across four up given these kind of a curve okay that's fine Two across and four up, two across, four up. Now as we get further along, eventually these new lines as I draw them are going to come into contact with the old lines. In fact, the next one is gonna do just that. So it works better to go backwards from that. Two across now, here's this one. Two across. That one didn't come off smoothly, so I'm gonna redo it. There we go, it's a little smoother. Do that one more time. So this one needs to meet this early one that I did. Try to alternate the directions of your strokes that way they're a little bit different. This one goes down here, this one goes up here. These two connect, and now these two connect. All right, let's save that as a Krita file. We'll call this Illustrator Hash Marks. And now we export it. As a PNG, of course. Make sure transparency is on. Hit OK. All right, back to Krita. And in debut here, we're gonna make a rock. Uh, let's see, what's a good color? We're gonna make a weird purple rock, I think. So this will be the light shaded size of 
side of the rock. And that still has the texture from my uh, my sweater attached to it. Let's make it a little thicker because we're gonna need that. All right, now we're gonna add the next step to it. So this will be a darker shade of purple. All right, now one last shade. And this one's gonna be the same shade of purple. But after establishing that shade, what we're going to do is we're going to add that texture that we just made, and we're going to choose the Illustrator hash marks. Now let's hash marks should go in the direction of the light. So since the light is hitting this side, these these hash marks need to go kind of diagonally from that direction. Now let's take this a step further and do some things to kind of make this look even more illustrated. Let's get rid of these dividers between the colors. And uh, let's do get rid of the ones on the bottom as well. Now, the thickness of the, the outline drawing line should be heaviest on the dark side, lightest on the light side. So we're going to shrink this one almost all the way down to zero. And we've got one, two, three points between them. So this one we're going to give 50%, this one 25%, this one will be 75 and This one down here, since it's at the darkest part, we'll give it a 200. We've got one, two, three points between them as well. So this one will be 150. This one will be 125. And this one will be 175. All right. Now, do we want to round this a little bit? Let's go to our rounding tool. Kind of smooth out that edge, make it a nice hand-drawn edge. This makes the transition between the colors really neat as well. And I don't think I want this one to be quite as wide. And the bottom should make kind of a gentle sort of curve. And this one's a little, a little heavy on the light side too. Let's give that a little more character. There we go. Hit render. And you have kind of an illustration style rock. This is just a quick and dirty one. It's not perfect. But you get an idea of some of the things that you can do with textures in Krita. So remember, uh, Krita is free. There's lots of things you can do with it, and there's lots of textures you can make to improve the, improve the models that you make on uh, Moho Debut. So have fun, and uh, keep animating, folks. I'll see you next video.